Welcome to our lecture online. So we're now ready to solve the system of linear equations using the row echelon form. And we're introducing to you doing this what we call the augmented matrix. Again, remember what we did on the previous video. We took the two equations in that form and placed them into a different form where we have the two variables on the left and the constants on the right. And then we're going to put those in what we call the augmented matrix. We take all the coefficients of the x's and the y's and the numbers over here and we place them into a matrix right here. So here are the coefficients of x and y, 1 and negative 1, 2 and 1, 1 and negative 1, 2 and 1, and over here behind the dotted line we place the two constants negative 2 and 8. This literally represents again the two equations in this format 1x minus y equals negative 2 and 2x plus y equals 8. And so you can see that this is exactly the same as the two equations over there. The rule echelon form wants to get ones across the diagonal and a zero over here. Now we're almost there. Notice that we have ones across the diagonal already, but we don't have a zero there. We want to turn that into a zero. Now here, notice that this is what we call row one. And this here is what we call row 2. So what we're going to do is we want to eliminate 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply the first row by the negative of the number in here, in the second row. So what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 2 times the first row, negative 2 times the first row, which is R1, put that as a negative, negative 2 times r1, and add that to r2. So we're doing an operation where we're multiplying this whole row, all the numbers in this row, by a negative 2, so negative 2 times everything in that row, and adding it to row 2. So we're going to replace row 2 by what this is equal to. So that means our new augmented matrix will become this. Notice we're not changing r1 row 1, the row 1 stays the same. And now what we're going to do is multiply row 1 by negative 2, so negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, add it to 2, we get 0. Let me do that again, see how that works. We're multiplying this whole row by negative 2, so negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2, add it to 2 gives me 0. Now negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2, added to 1 gives me a positive 3. So I multiply negative 1 times a negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, plus 1 is positive 3. And here I'm multiplying the negative 2 times a negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Added to 8, I get 12. So now, I'm not quite there yet because now I turn the 1 into a 3. I don't want a 3 there, I want a 1 there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take row, I'm going to take row 2 and replace it by one third row 2. And actually what I should have written here is I'm going to take row 2 and replace it by negative 2 times r1 plus row 2. I should have made that clear. So here what I said was I'm going to take row 2 and replace it by this. Negative 2 times this plus this. And here I'm going to take row 2 and replace it by a third of row 2. Essentially, I'm going to divide every number in row 2 by a 3. And let's continue that over here. So now my new augmented matrix will look like this. Notice I'm not changing R1, I'm only changing R2. So R1 stays the same, 1, negative 1, and negative 2. And R2 now becomes a third of everything in there. So 0 divided by 3 is still 0. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. So now I have this in the proper format. I have 1's across the diagonal, and on the left corner here, on the bottom left corner, I have a 0. So again, notice that what this means is that this is the column of all the x's, this is the column of all the y's. So I get now the new equations are x minus y equals negative 2, and here I get 0x plus 1y is equal to 4. Of course, 0x, that's simply 0. I don't need that. 
So simply I get y is equal to 4. So by using the row echelon form, I've been able to solve for one of the variables. In this case, the variable y, y is equal to 4. Then I plug that back into my other equation, and my other equation becomes x minus y, which is 4, is equal to negative 2. So x is equal to negative 2 plus 4, or x is equal to 2. And notice the very same result again. I can say that the x and y coordinates of the point where the two lines cross is equal to 2 and 4. And those are the very same results that we got before. Now you're probably going to say, wow, that seemed like a lot of work. And I knew those other methods that were so much easier and simpler to use. And the answer is yes, those are much easier and simpler to use, especially in this case. But as things get more complicated, sometimes these methods are better than the other methods that we learned before. So we should learn how to do that. But again, in this case, for this set of videos, this is just as a reference. I want to at least present it to you so that you've seen it before, but we're probably going to do more examples of the other type because those are easier for us right now. But notice, if anybody ever says row edge law form, well, then you know it's exactly this, and that is how it's done. Much easier to use uh, elimination. The elimination method is definitely a lot easier. You're right. This method is definitely uh, much easier to use in computer programs, yes. As a matter of fact, that's probably the only way you could use it. <laughs> All right. And programmable calculators.